Hi, and welcome to the SLR, or Single Lens Reflex Camera. The SLR is one of the most common types of camera in use today, and is a choice for many professionals and advanced hobbyists alike. The most common form of SLR is based on the 35mm film SLR. 35mm refers to the width of a single frame of film. The dimensions are actually 36 millimeters by 24 millimeters, but for some reason has been rounded down to 35. So what does single lens reflex mean? With an SLR camera, the image you see in the viewfinder will be identical to the image being captured on the film or the sensor. This is because the light entering the lens is redirected up into the viewfinder through a mirror and prism system. Before the SLR, cameras had two different paths for the light to travel down one being the main lens, the other being a separate lens leading directly to the viewfinder. This is essentially a double lens system, one for the actual photo and a second giving an approximation of the photo that is being taken. These types of cameras are often referred to as viewfinder or rangefinder cameras. A disposable camera is a good example of this type of system. The downside of this is that the photographer doesn't see the exact image being captured and therefore must estimate the composition and focus for the picture. This is also limiting in that the viewfinder must be calibrated for the specific lens of that camera, making any other lens of a different focal length impossible to use. With the SLR system, the light is reflected from the lens directly into the viewfinder. This gives the photographer the exact same image in the viewfinder as will be captured by the camera sensor. The term reflex refers to the mirror system that allows for this redirecting of the light. As the light passes through the lens, it first hits a mirror, which reflects the light upward into a prism that then redirects and reorients the light into the viewfinder, showing the image that is about to be taken. When the shutter button is pressed, the reflex mirror is moved out of the way, allowing the light to reach the shutter, which then itself opens, allowing the light to hit the sensor or film inside the camera. The shutter is basically a set of mechanical blades that block light from reaching the sensor or film in a camera. When the shutter release button is pressed, these blades open, exposing the sensor to the image from the lens. The time that the shutter remains open is the length of the exposure, therefore shutter speed and exposure time are the same thing. Like the aperture in the lens, the shutter essentially governs how much light will be captured by the camera's sensor. A slow shutter speed means that the shutter will be open for a longer amount of time and will thus capture more light than would a fast exposure. This creates a close relationship between the aperture in the lens and the shutter in the camera. With a fast shutter speed, you'll be capturing much less light and will therefore require a much wider aperture. Conversely, slow shutter speeds require smaller apertures. Now, we'll cover more about aperture in the lens section, so don't worry about that too much for now. But, like aperture, there's more to selecting a shutter speed than simply getting a proper exposure. The effect of different shutter speeds on a photo can be quite striking and can be a very powerful creative tool in the photographer's hands. A slow shutter speed can cause a blurring effect in an image. While this isn't usually desirable, if used properly, it can convey a sense of motion in a photo or lead to an artistic abstract look. Faster shutter speeds can be used to freeze fast motion, often allowing a view of the world that would otherwise happen too fast to be captured by the eye. The image sensor in a digital camera takes on the role previously played by the film. When light strikes a piece of film, chemical molecules on that film react differently to the varying brightness and colors of the light. When the film is processed, those different reactions translate into the different colors and brightness levels and form an image. A sensor does the same thing except through a digital electronic process. Individual pixels on the sensor capture the light and convert it into electrical charges or voltages that represent the varying color and brightness values. Those values are then processed by the camera's computer and converted into an image. While most digital SLRs, or DSLRs, are based on the 35mm format, they don't all have the same size sensor. A camera with a full frame sensor will have a sensor that's the same size as a piece of 35mm film. Most consumer level cameras, however, have smaller sensors. This smaller sensor will have a noticeable effect on the image being captured. The focal length of a lens for these DSLRs is still based on the 35mm film measurements, but with a smaller sensor, the image captured will take on a sort of magnification effect. It's often implied that this effect increases the focal length of a lens, but this is incorrect. 
the lens will still have the same optical qualities as the stated focal length, but because it's based on the 35 millimeter camera, it will project the image onto an area of 36 millimeters by 24 millimeters, regardless of the sensor's size. So the image is essentially being cropped at the sensor. While this isn't necessarily a problem, it does mean that without a full frame sensor, you'll not be getting the most out of a lens, especially with wide lenses. Now, a digital image sensor is an incredibly complex device that uses pixels with micro lenses over each of those pixels and other hardware and software to create an image. So the pixel count is by no means the end-all be-all of image sharpness. The main advantage to having more pixels on a sensor is the size at which you can print your photos. For high quality photos printed around 8 by 10, you're going to want at least a 10 megapixel camera. When you get up near around 18 by 22 inches, an 18 megapixel camera will work great. It's best to experiment with your camera though and see what kind of results you get. So that's a look at the SLR and how it works and its basic parts. In the next section, we'll look at the lens and how it relates to your SLR camera.